Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7 Update 1.40 or Spec 2. In this video I'm going to be covering the second of the two menu books which came to this game with obviously Update 1.40. This time it surrounds the Nations Cup and the Red Bull X 2019. Now these events are a little bit strange in the way that they're quite lengthy or kind of mid-length, around about 15 to 20 minutes uh, total, but are basically full-blown extreme sprint racers. They're great fun, and in all honesty, after absolutely throwing this car around, taking on the AI on the hardest difficulty, um, I was genuinely very very exhausted uh, from throwing this thing around uh, come the end of it so i'm going to give you a full guide and rundown on the hardest difficulty on how to complete the nation's cup menu book so let's get straight so before we get into the events themselves we're going to take a look at the menu book itself this is event uh, menu book number 49 there's three events as usual in here your reward is going to be a six star roulette ticket and as you can see it entirely focuses around the x2019 or the red bull x2019 for its full specific name there's two versions of that vehicle which you can pick from it doesn't matter which one you go for in terms of the events we've got interlagos Sardinia and Dragon Trail Seaside with the Notorious Death Chicane. Now in terms of the vehicle itself, just pick the one you want uh, whether that's the Special Edition or the Standard, whatever, um, but in terms of the upgrades for it, just stick on a fully customizable racing transmission and get yourself a set of uh, soft tyres and medium tires in terms of the event difficulty i'm going to be running these on the hardest difficulty if you want to make it easy just feel free it doesn't matter and then in terms of the first event we're going to head over to interlagos for round one now in terms of this event itself it's a little bit different to the others you're going to see with that there's only 12 vehicles actually on track whereas i believe the other two actually have 20 vehicles and you start in mid pack so race one this feels a bit like an introduction to the other two events you're going to be starting at the back there's only 12 other vehicles on the track and like i said as you get into the other two events they're going to be much much bigger in terms of their scale and a little bit different in terms of you starting mid-pack and either trying not to lose places but also trying to get yourself going forward as well now we're on the highest difficulty here and we don't have a car advantage now in terms of the way you want to run these I fully recommend running them like an extreme sprint. What I mean by that is you don't need to fuel save. Go on the fastest possible tyre and get ready for them to fade off massively towards the end of the event. For Interlagos, I fully recommend the racing softs. The main reason for this is, in all honesty, they're held in quite well. Even when they got to the end of the event and, you know, they should realistically be making the car skid and slide everywhere. It just didn't do that. As long as I was short shifting and using my manual transmission, I was just absolutely fine to just coast around for a couple of laps with fairly worn out tyres. So since you're not actually worrying about saving your fuel or anything like that, the main thing you want to do is just keep an eye on that tyre life and just overtake the AI as fast fast as humanly possible the main reason i recommend doing this is just because you've got a bit of clear track you can focus on keeping them softs alive as much as possible all the way to the end now slipstream is going to be one of your best friends when it comes to these cars they're absolutely great at following in terms of you know absolutely slingshotting yourself past it works an absolute charm even on the highest difficulty you can really pull off some last minute slingshot moves to get yourself into the corner before the ai as you're going to see i'm going to do it exactly now on the leader i'm going to pull out get it down the inside and that's going to be first place over and done with at this point i can just focus on ensuring that my tires are going to get to the end and that's exactly what i did although they were very much worn at that uh, rear right to be honest it was rather quite easy to keep the car going uh, for the this length of time in terms of the overall event it was a 15 minutes 30.728 fastest lap came on lap five of a 116 and in terms of the event payout it's 150,000 credits without clean race bonus if you do get that you're looking at a 50 percent extra payout 
on top of the standard 150,000 and we get our first stamp of the bunch. So into Lagos, bit of a weird one. To be honest, it feels like a, a sort of tutorial slash introduction event to the rest of the uh, uh, events in this menu book. Again, it's a smaller grid in terms of the overall pace of the event. It was much easier than the others in terms of you know getting through the AI because there's less of them and they're not bunching up as much. It was just easier to get to the front. Again, softs should be all good to the end. As long as you're using short shifting, you won't need to worry about fuel. And with that being said, we're going to move into event number two at the um, Sardinia A layout that I think we all know uh, since we've been grinding there for over a year at this point. So event number two takes place at Sardinia Road Track A, the one we all know from the grind itself. As you can see in terms of the overall event, it's actually going to be a bigger grid. So just be aware of that. You're going to be starting mid-grid. I turn the downforce of the car up to the maximum. This is so I can take advantage through the sort of you know middle to late sector where it gets quite twisty and turny and use the slipstream to kind of carry me along down the main straight there really is no downside to just boosting up that downforce apart from really you know having more grip so in terms of the event use it exactly the same way that you did the one previous we're going to be starting on the softs here however i would recommend that you actually take the mediums the main reason for this is i spent a lot of the latter half of this event absolutely struggling for grip losing time although i managed to pull a decent enough gap out that was pretty much gone uh, later on so i actually took the lead initially on lap three which is quite early on and overall it felt much easier and i began to build a gap however you're going to see a little bit later on come lap 11 my tires were absolutely shredded and i've still got a good chunk of time to you know absolutely drag this car across and my gap to the car behind in fact two of them was completely depleting by the time i got to lap 13 i was pretty much ready and willing to be a sitting duck and be absolutely overtaken at the last minute however i did manage to kind of keep the car going this is why i fully recommend taking mediums and just kind of playing the long game i tried to sprint it and it didn't really work too much only just holding in there by the time lap 13 ended winning by around about two tenths of a second but in the process going away with one of my most entertaining races against gt7's ai ever in terms of my overall time for this one it was a bit longer at 18 minutes 29.734 as you can see the grid overall was much bigger and we started mid grid fastest lap was a 123.442 on lap two and in terms of the sort of you know top 13 it was all separated by less than 10 seconds this was an insanely good race insanely exhausting but insanely close really enjoyed this one but i do recommend going for the mediums in terms of your payout a little bit more for this one 175,000 credits again didn't get the clean race bonus but if you do you'll get a 50 percent on top of that and that's going to give us stamp number two so since these are full-blown sprint events in the extreme sense, you won't need to be worrying about fuel conservation. In all honesty, but if at all three of these events, you're going to have plenty enough fuel to get yourself to the end. In terms of your tyre compound, don't go with the softs. I do regret that. It made this event much more difficult than it realistically had to be. And whilst I had plenty of pace at first, that absolutely dropped off a cliff towards the end so definitely go for the mediums as i said i recommend putting the downforce to the maximum it allows you to be so quick through that kind of middle sector and again in terms of the ai you can just pull yourself along in the slipstream and even get some last minute slingshot overtakes so on to the final event of this menu book this is dragon trail seaside featuring the notorious death chicane yeah it's not too bad actually you can actually use it to your advantage the ai through there seem to be massively inconsistent and just very very outright slow i recommend the default tuning setup there's no real need to change much of anything and in terms of the tire compound i recommend taking the mediums which should just about give you enough grip to get all the way to the end i don't recommend running hard it's just outright too slow as you can see through the death chicane the ai here are incredibly inconsistent you're not needing to fuel save or anything like that so just be you know take your time but be quick through there and you can make up a ton of time on the ai as you can see i'm going to take the lead here 
on lap 7 out of 14 around about the midway point and realistically I'm never going to look back. Because of how slow the AI is actually through the death chicane I managed to build up a pretty nice gap before the tyres started falling off to be honest. As you can see from around about lap 13 or 14 I was just gently taking my time and just trying to conserve the rest of them to get myself across the finish line which I did ahead by around about 7 tenths to a second in terms of the rest of the AI. Just build your advantage early on and you should be all good at the end when the tyres start dropping off. As you can see 19 minutes 6 seconds 0.231 for this one and the AI actually got the fastest lap on uh, lap number 10 which is the final lap with a 118.949. So now it's time to move on to the payout for this event. In terms of the overall payout, this is the highest paying of the three, 190,000 credits. Didn't get the clean race bonus, but you will get the 50% on top of that, obviously. And that is going to give us our final stamp for our menu book, meaning that we've completed both of the new menu books um, for the i guess update 1.40 e, spec 2 whatever you want to call it now in terms of this final event i would definitely say this isn't the hardest of the bunch in terms of the ai because they're so incredibly inconsistent through the death chicane you won't need to worry about them really too much again as long as you build up enough of a gap on mediums early on by the time they drop off the ai just won't end up catching you and then realistically you can just kind of block them anyway so we're going to head back to the CAF and Luke is going to pop up just congratulating us and giving us our reward for completion of the menu book, which is a six star roulette ticket reward. So we're going to go ahead and open that up now and see what we're going to be given. As you can see, we've got a couple of group one cars on there and a few high money payouts and we're going to take away the 500,000 credit reward. So not bad on top of what we've earned from the event. I really can't complain around about a million for those three events there. And well, that's going to conclude the second menu book of the two that came with update 1.40. This one absolutely enjoyed it. It's some real, you know, extreme sprint racing, kind of worrying about the tyres towards the end. I had some very, very enjoyable races here. I'm going to try and get my full guide done for all of the events that came with 1.40. So expect that either tonight or maybe tomorrow morning. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Peace.